Let's say we're going to simplify the square root of x to the 10th. I'm going to start with drawing a tree to help reveal to me what's inside the x to the 10th. So by definition, he is x times x times x times x times x, 10 x's being multiplied together. That's the meaning of x to the 10th. What we can do is we can group together half of them on one side and the other half on the other side. And if you were to multiply these two things together, you would get x to the 10th, which shows that he actually breaks up into x to the 5th times x to the 5th. And so since he breaks up into something times itself, that is just by definition right there, the square root of x to the 10th. Why? Because x to the 5th times x to the 5th makes x to the 10th. That's why the square root of x to the 10th is actually x to the fifth. Okay, so what that means is that he is a perfect square. These are important when you're doing these radical breakdowns. You're looking for perfect squares so that you can simplify. Now, what I would do typically is I would break a radical into two parts. Now, it's not necessary here, but in some problems, it will be helpful to break the thing up into what's called the perfect square part and what I refer to as the non-perfect part. The issue with this guy is he is himself a perfect square. So what I would do is I'd put him on the left in perfect square part. And in this problem, you don't need a non-perfect part because there isn't one. And then he just breaks down into this. And you could even write that, that x to the 10th is made up of x to the 5th times x to the 5th. So when you take the square root, you get x to the 5th. I bring up that process because that's the kind of thing we have to do with the more complicated problems. Take something like this, for example. I'm going to draw a tree. Yeah, 18x to the fifth y, break them down. I usually break them down into a number part and a variable part. Then with the numbers, I try to break it down even more into let's say nine and two. Two is prime, so we would stop the branch there. We wouldn't go any farther, but nine is not prime. Yeah, it breaks up into more stuff. But what he is, is he is a perfect square. And that's significant to this problem. This guy is obviously not a perfect square. Because he won't factor into two identical integer factors. Uh, so the perfect square there breaks up into 3 and 3. What you're looking for in these trees is you're looking for pairs. Pairs of primes are things that let you know that you have a perfect square. So the two is unpaired. So he's not a perfect square. But the three has a partner. And so what we do with these problems is we break up the radical into two separate radicals. One of them being the perfect square part. And then the other part is like the non-perfect part. Now the 3 and the 3, they should be part of the perfect square radical. But the 2 there needs to go in the non-perfect radical. Now we'll deal with the variables. So break that uh, up into, say, x to the 5th and y. y does not have a partner, therefore he would go in the non-perfect radical x to the fifth uh, is made up of five x's where some of them have partners and others don't. Like this x here doesn't have a partner. But the x to the fourth, that will be made up of pairs of x's. 
In fact, uh, he's x squared times x squared, which breaks up into four different x's, which are obviously all paired. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to put the four x's that are paired on the left. And the single x needs to stay behind in the other radical. At that point, you have the option of recombining everything that's in the perfect square part. So that would make 9x to the fourth. This is going to be considered the largest perfect square that is found in 18x to the fifth y. Okay, what gets left behind is the 2xy. And now we're going to take the square root of the left side. We're going to take the square root of that. So he's going to be 3x squared. And you leave this guy as is.